Hi, my name is Quentin Tradeup. I'm a fourth year at Augsburg here. I'm studying biology with a chem minor. Um, today I'm going to be talking about how the immune system interacts with the central nervous system during uh, an infection, primarily a bacterial infection. So before I get started, I'm going to give you guys a preview of what I'll be talking about today. Um, to start, I'll be talking about the central nervous system, giving you a brief overview of that as well as um, the immune system and the blood-brain barrier. Um, and with those three things, I'll also be talking about how the immune system um, interacts with the central nervous system during an infection and what is occurring during a bacterial infection in the brain. So, let's get right to it. The central nervous system consists of a brain and a spinal cord. and it was thought that the brain was immune privileged and what this meant was that the brain was able to accept grafts with a very very low rejection rate so essentially the immune system was unable to interact with the central nervous system and reject this graft now this wasn't true um, I'll talk about that later though now let's get right into the immune system the immune system consists of multiple organs that secrete, um, that produce um, cells that are very specific to certain functions. And these immune cells interact within the body to prevent infections such as bacterial infections. Um, some primary cells of interest that I'll be talking about today are the microglia um, and oligodendrocytes, as well as the astrocytes, neutrophils, T-cells, monocytes, dendrites, and that's it. So I'll talk about their functions later for you guys. Um, but now let's talk about something that's going to be key here in defending our brain. Um, adaptive immunity and innate immunity. They're both sub-branches in the immune system. Um, primarily when you get an infection, the innate immunity, this is really hard to say, innate immune response occurs and what it is is it's kind of your first defense like right away just making sure your, your body's somehow able to defend a little bit and so it's fast acting but unfortunately it doesn't have any memory and it's not specific so this essentially is good and bad good in the sense that hey it's fast acting so it's able to really pick up on the infection right away but bad in the sense that it has no aim or direction, so it's essentially blind. And that makes it really bad in the brain because the brain has really important stuff in it that can't be replaced once it's targeted. So we need this innate re immune response to be there, but also to switch over right away. And this leads us to the adaptive immunity. Adaptive immunity is what we want. Adaptive immunity has memory. It's able to, uh, it's specific and diverse. Um, it takes a little bit longer to get started than the innate immune system, um, but it also uh, is very efficient. Um, and it, ha it's, it leaves lasting effects in everything that targets. And it also, key here, is able to determine self um, from non-self. So this is what we want to occur in the brain. But how does this switch occur? Talk about that later. Next slide. All right, so while we're on the topic of the immune system, I'm gonna talk about something that's gonna occur quite often. Neutrophil rolling. So what neutrophil rolling is, is essentially the attraction of neutrophils to the, towards the site of infection via chemokines. These chemokines um, are released into the bloodstream and um, this allows neutrophils to come towards the source of infection where the chemokines are. And once these neutrophils pick up on those chemokines, they begin rolling. And once they begin rolling, they're starting to interact with the surface and slowly they start to stop rolling and adhere to the surface. Um, Toward two selectins. These selectins then interact with surface proteins on the neutrophil and then they become activated. Now once they become activated, 
that are able to transmigrate through the membrane and into the site of infection. Now, once the neutrophils are inside, they're able to do their job. And what their job is, I'll talk about later. Ah, teasing. So, let's talk about the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier consists of <clears throat> a network of capillaries. Now, these capillaries consist of endothelial cells that that uh, um, have tight junctions and besides that they also have astrocytes and end feet astrocyte end feet and periocytes and microglia now the blood brain barrier allows passive diffusion of water um, some gases and lipid soluble molecules on top of that it also defends the brain against bacterial infections so it's pretty much a shield, or it was thought to be an impenetrable, uh, impenetrable shield, so it didn't need the help of the immune system. This was wrong. Now, immune, so like I said, impenetrable, immune privileged. Um, there was research that initially confirmed this, and then there was further research that deconfirmed this. Now, the initial uh, research was that um, what they did was they dyed, they put dye into the circulatory system, and after the circula the dye had ran its course through the circulatory system, they examined the organs of the individual, and the organs all ha showed staining, except there was little staining on the brain, and this led them to believe that the circulatory system was unable to allow, or the blood the blood brain barrier was unable to allow certain things through, so like cells, um, any of that kind of stuff that wasn't able to interact with the brain. And so essentially the immune system is unable to get through to the brain. Um, now, they also did the graft testing, which was the immune privilege thing, um, where the graft, first graft, fine, no rejection, but they tried a second graft, and the second graft was rejected. Now, this, le this pretty much upheaved everything they had said. They had to throw out all their ideas because now the immune system is able to somehow detect that that graft is foreign inside the brain. So the blood-brain barrier isn't uh, immune privileged and is more permeable. Well, let's see. All right, so the immune system at, uh, interacting with the central nervous system. Uh, in the case of a neural inflammation, the blood-brain barrier's uh, conformation begins to change, and chemokine production is amped up as well as um, there's an upregulation of surface adhesion molecules. Essentially what this means is T cells and other immune cells are able to get into the central nervous system during infection. Um, but during this, um, cellular recruitment into the <clears throat> central nervous system is still controlled. What that means is um, there's cells called glial cells that make sure that there's not so not too many cells getting in at one time or there's not essentially an autoimmune response happening here where the cells get confused and start attacking your cells. So the glial cells promote apoptosis will when needed be. All right, bacterial infections of the brain. These are rare, but they're almost always life-threatening, so we need to treat them. We need to figure out how to treat them, I should say. And um, these occur primarily via three mechanisms. The first mechanism is direct damage to the endothelial cells. The second one is um, disruption of the intercellular um, tight junctions and then migration through be, or migration between endothelial cells and then the third one is uh, the bacteria is able to utilize um, vesicles and get across membrane membranes through the vesicle now once a bacterial infection is inside um, the innate immune response like I said earlier starts right away 
and begins defending against the bacterial infection. But we need that innate re immune response, remember, to kick over to an adaptive immune response. So the players here that are going to help that are listed as follows. Microglia. What microglia does is they uh, phagocytose um, bacteria, and once they phagocytose, they break down this bacteria and present it on its cells like with little appendages, like, hey, look at this, for other cells to see. And this allows the cells to kind of get a memory of what they need to look for, and they become more specific and directionalized. Um, besides that, they're also able to break down the blood-brain barrier, and this allows for more uh, immune cells to enter the central nervous system. Um, now, astrocytes. Astrocytes are the partners to microglia, essentially. They do everything the microglia does. They just facilitate, help, uh, do what they need. And then they also, during norm normal conditions, contribute towards gap junction stability. So they prevent kind of one of the primary mechanisms of bacterial infections getting in. Um, but that's under normal conditions. Once uh, infected or once an infection occurs, they, like I said earlier, assist microglia and then they also release chemokines and recruit neutrophils, monocytes, as, and T cells as well as upregulating um, surface adhesion molecules. So essentially they're bringing in more cells. So everything's bringing in more cells towards the source of infection. So something that's occurring here is it, everything's occurring quickly here so that they can kill the infection as quickly as possible in the brain. Now, among the cells being brought in now are the neutrophils. Like I said earlier, with neutrophil rolling, they're here now. Well, neutrophils are your primary line of host defense. They're the guys that are going to eat everything. They're going to kill everything. They're the, they're the guys that are going to make you better. Neutrophils do a lot of things here. Besides killing and phagocytosing, they uh, upregulate adhesion molecules, so they bring in more of their buddies. And um, a curious thing here is the blood barrier barrier wants more cells in it, like more cells to cross it. So what it will do is it will express integrin on it, and as well as selectin. And by expressing integrin and selectin, selectin, oh, sorry, neutrophil rolling occurs. So more neutrophils can be brought in, and essentially more cells can be brought through the blood brain barrier. And so another thing neutrophils do is they release um, defensins, lytic enzymes and uh, antimicrobial peptides. And these are the guys that stay after the infection's been killed. And so what they do is pretty much make sure that no infection occurs while the brain is down, or essentially while you are down. So they're the bodyguards till you get better. And um, another thing they do on top of this is they also release chemokines that shift uh, the innate re immune response towards an adaptive immune response. Now, when we talk about adaptive immunity, we're going to talk about T cells. T cells produce interferon gamma, uh, which in turn leads to the generation of chemokines that recruit monocytes and more T cells towards the area. So essentially, you're shifting the adaptive immune response even more. So Adaptive immunity is occurring now. All right, review. So let's talk about what I've gone over today. Um, during infection, the immune response, uh, during infection, the immune system signals for cells to come into the central nervous system. Um, the blood brain barrier, barrier becomes more permeable and allows the uh, immune system to interact with the central nervous system. Um, the innate immunity is switched over to an adaptive immune response and all of this is occurring quickly and efficiently so as to mim minimize neuronal damage in the brain. Um, and then on top of all that there are checks and balances to prevent autoimmunity via the glial cells and in conclusion, 
we have um, by observing how the immune system interacts with the central nervous system via the blood-brain barrier, we can um, identify that the blood-brain barrier and the brain are less immune privileged, and are and actually that the the blood-brain barrier um, is more permeable and facilitates um, the immune system to um, entering the central nervous system during an infection. Some possible future research would be to better understand how the immune system interacts with the central nervous system so that we're able to um, understand how to counteract against really serious diseases in the brain such as MS. Um, so by understanding the interaction, hopefully we can come up with a cure for MS. Um, at this time, I'd like to open the floor to questions.